Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Music 101 Podcast. I am Scoobert Dubert, and I'm joined by a very, very, very special guest, Slow Leaves, a.k.a. Grant, coming all the way from Canada, I, I assume? That's right. I'm in Winnipeg. Winnipeg. I've been to Winnipeg. Oh, yeah. Have you, uh, have you heard of the band uh, Royal Canoe? Uh, local band. Yes, I know, yeah. I know those guys, yeah. I love that band. I didn't know you were one. Yeah. Okay, how cool. Yeah, well, yeah, very cool band. Yeah, I know those guys pretty well. Oh, no way. You're kidding me. Yeah. So we're going to have a uh, fun little conversation just about music, life, internet, and just kind of jump around fluidly from topic to topic. Kind of the premise of this podcast is inviting uh, both music fans and musicians into other people's process, other people's like views on music, and then hopefully expanding their ability not just to like make music, but also consume it and and be a part of that like dialogue with creators and stuff like that. So sounds good, and it looks like you're coming from uh, Maui or something. Yeah, right. Where are you? I am in San Diego, but also in my bedroom. It's not very ah, pretty behind sweet. me. <laughs> sweet, <laughs> but, it looks yeah. nice. Looks nice. We got about fifteen feet of snow out. No right way. Now, so fifteen yeah, feet. Well, I'm exaggerating a little <laughs> bit, but but. No, but no shit. A good like yeah. uh, up to, up to your waist for sure. The snow Dang. banks on the roads are yeah. are easily ten feet. Dang. It's been an epic uh, 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 winter of snow this year. Amazing. We're waiting for spring still patiently. Yes. Well, I will try and send a little San Diego your way. Yeah, you don't know what that's I, like. I don't. I know what it's. <laughs> I know what it's like down there. My sister lives in San Diego. Oh, no I know what it's all about. What part? What part? Uh, well, actually she, she moved around a bit, but mm-hmm. I, more, most recently, I think, uh, just a few months ago, she, she actually moved up to Carlsbad. Nice. So that's actually not, which, not far from where I'm from. I, I grew up in a little beach town called Encinitas, which is just South of Carlsbad. So, uh, plenty of good go. times in that beautiful, beautiful part of the country. So if you do, anyway, if you make know, it out. I know about the maybe? weather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Totally. Yeah. I know about the weather you're keeping. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of, uh, kind of being tucked in by snow and, and weather and things like that, I'm curious, does, does like seasonality affect your writing process, like writing songs or thinking about music? I, I'm, I always am curious with songwriters, how much of it's outside, how much of it's inside that affects what you make. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It does. Um, I mean, like, yeah, here in Winnipeg and, you know, in a lot of Canada, like, uh, a lot of our year is defined by winter, you know, Mm. and we, we have a really nice summer. Um, but it's like summer is so precious to us, especially, uh, like here in Winnipeg's right in the center of the, of the country and it's like prairies and, uh, we get a ton of snow, we get a long cold winter and, um, yeah, our summers come around and it's nice. It's like, you know, plus 30, I guess that's like, I don't know, plus 90 Fahrenheit or something, mm-hmm. uh, 98 or something. Uh, so it gets hot in the summer and, uh, but people just like, it's like a celebration, you know, cool. people, you got to soak it up cause it's so precious. And then we, we, uh, we hunker down for these long winters and, uh, it gets dark, right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. like, uh, in the, in the real thick of it. Uh, it's, it, it basically gets dark at like 4.30 PM. So you come home, it's dark, you're making dinner, you get up, it's dark. And, uh, that, can I swear a little bit? I don't no, know what your it, uh, vibe you're is good, here. You're good. Go for I'm it. Not a, I'm not like a sailor or something. Wow. Well, you're in the sailor territory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those, I'm even kind of wearing like parts, a piratey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, it, uh, it fucks with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. it really does. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, so, I mean, some people are more, uh, affected by it than others, but mm-hmm. absolutely I, I'm affected by, you know, the, the, the amount of light and, mm-hmm. uh, my mood is affected by that, but more so, yeah, like, uh, the, the, the lyrically, there's just sort of like ideas and themes that just naturally work into my songs mm-hmm. that are affected by, uh, you know, I think we're just all uh, products are of, our, of our environment to a certain extent For sure. uh, or to a larger extent than we want to maybe uh, acknowledge. But um, mm. yeah, like in the winter, I have snow and darkness and isolation. That stuff just works it into works into my songs. And likewise, in summer, it feels weird to write about, you know, I don't mention snow or yeah. anything. Either. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I don't know. Yes. I guess <laughs> that's a long way of saying yes, <laughs> no, it I does like impact the way I write. No, I like that. I also, I mean, I sometimes I feel like there's like a component of 
yeah, the, what you're getting in terms of weather and vibe of like the people around you, but then also just the way that you kind of your brain chemistry is in a given moment. I'm curious with writers, yes. do you feel like the sparks of inspiration where like if you have to table a song and come back to it, it's it's like it's not going to be the same song. Like you almost like almost have to there are certain moments you have to like crystallize in order to make like like for example, if there's a song that I'm editing over the course of several weeks, that is just going to be there's going to be a fundamentally different flavor to something that it just came in one totally. session. Yeah, well, there's work involved no matter what, yeah, right? Totally. And I think I I agree with what you're saying. For for me, it uh, and I, people I've talked to, creative people, I think mm -hmm. this is pretty calm. And it's like sometimes your your best stuff uh, comes without with it, it feels like the least amount of effort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then because uh, you know there's there's some moments where you know lightning strikes or whatever, and you just you have that it's like the right time, the right frame of mind, the right sort of inspiration. And things just pour out like some of my what I think some of my best songs mm -hmm. are, and I could I could you know I could look at them from album to album and and all the what I would consider my best songs uh, are generally the ones that came within like a day or a, mm. or two you know just like but for sure like the lightning strikes in a day and I just you know where it's going you just got to put the pieces together and the words come and all that stuff. And then there's, you know, it doesn't know, some people maybe are like that if, you know, there's Bob Dylan's out there, but, mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't always happen to, for me. Um, and so a lot of the time it just becomes work. Yeah. Right. Totally. It's still, you know, it's still it's satisfying work, mm -hmm. but you get that initial inspiration and you try to sort of carve out where it's going, but it doesn't get there so easily. And so, yeah, some songs I have, uh, it, there's a whole process and it's, sometimes it's frustrating. It feels like work. You got to force things into shape. You know, you're like trying to mold it yeah. and it takes some effort. You get there in the end, you get, you might get a great song and the listener, maybe they don't know anything, you know, they're, they're, yeah. they don't, they don't detect that, mm -hmm. but I, I, there is something, there's a balance between mm. the work and the inspiration that if you get it right, cause it's always work. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, if you get it right, then it just, it, it feels effortless, but the craft is like well intact. Whereas sometimes if you labor over it, it just feels labored over hmm. and it's missing a bit of that, uh, that sort of whimsy that, that comes with not overthinking because it's, it's coming from, you know, some kind of deep inner, inner place that your intellect hasn't interfered with too much. Do you know what I, I mean? I totally know what you mean. And I'm curious about like, cause I, I know that some people will hear this concept of work and be like, that's where I stop. Like the, you know, like they'll, they'll be carried by that cord of inspiration and then they'll, they'll get discouraged. And I know there are a lot of yeah. people have trouble finishing and, and yeah. actually being like, this song is done or this song is ready to be recorded or this song is ready to be released. There are traps kind of all along the way to make it so the song never gets birthed into the world. Do you have any techniques or anything that you could share? Like if somebody's running into those walls, what do you do personally? Like, how do you interpret that work? How do you get from that, that place where you have the inspiration? It's almost there, but then you turn it into something real. Hmm. <laughs> My initial thought is I abandon it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> but, that, no, but, but I, that, no, that can be appropriate it, too. There, yeah. No, you're, you're, I know exactly what you're, you're saying. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's a, there's a gradation, right? Course, Obviously course. like each, each song, each, each project, each kind of piece is different in terms of, you know, measuring kind of what you need to put in to get what you want out. Okay. And, and like I said, on one extreme of the scale is like effortless in 20 minutes. Sometimes you're like, Oh fuck, it just flows out. And you're like, Holy shit. The God's gifted me a song. Totally. Right. Yeah. You're like, I didn't write that and, actually. Uh, yeah. 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 And I think, uh, that's a gift, you know, yes. nobody knows where that comes from. And you hear that over and over from creative people that that happens, but it's not always the case. Like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so it's just, yeah, like there's some songs that I, I, I love. It's like, there's a seed there that I'm really excited about. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I just got to hammer through this, but sometimes it just, it just, it, it isn't working. And if I, I don't give up though mm -hmm. until I feel like I've really, you know what happens? Yeah. I don't actually give up, but some other song sort of takes its place I like and I get excited about that. Yeah. And then I move on to something. So it's a balance. I, I guess I, I have a hard time totally relating to people who say, oh, I just never finished it or I couldn't finish it. Mm -hmm. um, there's tons of songs that I haven't finished, mm -hmm. but 
there's always something else that kind of gets me excited to keep going. And then I feel good about that. And sometimes I'll go back to things. I'll keep plugging away when I'm not feeling overly inspired mm -hmm. by something I'm excited about. Cause I think you need to keep that element of work in it because it is work. There's a bit of a mythology about it. Like mm -hmm. just, it's always got to be joy or it's always just going to, you're going to feel it. Well, that's not reality. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like Leonard Cohen, for instance, mm -hmm. he would, he just, he saw it purely as work. Mm -hmm. And obviously we're not all Leonard Cohen, <laughs> yeah, right. but you know, I've read about, you know, moments where he'd, he'd literally be lying on his floor, smashing, you know, banging his forehead against the floor, trying to just find the word. Mm -hmm. It's work. Mm -hmm. He would, he would sit down with a pen and paper, whether he uh, had an idea or not. So there's kind of two spectrums, yeah. right? And then you got your Bob Dylans who are writing a song in a cab ride. Yeah. I guess the idea is it's, it's just always work, but the mythology getting back to it mm -hmm. with Bob Dylan, he's on that extreme. But but his notes are filled with edits. Like yes. his songs, if right. you go back into it, he's he was always editing, always working. It's just uh, everybody's got to work at it, and sometimes some people it comes a little more easily, some are not. But it's there's a balance, I guess, right? It's totally. like you could work as hard as you want and end up with a piece of shit that you're not happy with. Well, mm -hmm. then that work's wasted. So mm -hmm. it's a it's sometimes you got to be prepared to walk away. Is all I'm gonna say. I guess no, that's a good. That's a good point. I I think that that's one of the it's one of the fun things about conversations like this is that fundamentally both extremes end up being true where it's like some days you're going to feel like Bob Dylan. Some days you're going to feel like Leonard Cohen. Some days you're going to feel like you don't even know how to play music. And yeah, there's no one way to do it. <laughs> That's the thing. There's yeah. no rules in this shit, right. right? I think, I think we get bogged down mm -hmm. uh, by you see what other people are doing and you think that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And you always think other people are doing it more easily than you. Mm -hmm. They're doing it better than you. And and most of the time they're having the same thoughts. Yes. You know? Yes. I We're all full of doubts. I, I want to talk to you about, because, so personally, my my journey, I started on acoustic guitar, singer, songwriter, writing everything on acoustic mm. guitar with a pad of paper. And then I have turned into this top liner, this computer-based guy that I feel like a lot of my music ends up sounding like that. But it's still a core of me that is a singer, songwriter. Every once in a while, I go back to it. You talk about like your process in like set, sitting down, writing that song. I know you're, you're great with finger style guitar. I love the tones that you're able to get out of it. Are, do you, do you come from that kind of more singer songwriter place or do you come from it from the computer side or do you kind of meld the two? Like I, I write a lot when I'm recording, I kind of, I get inspiration f hearing where I'm going to sit if that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, it does make sense. What do you, you what know. do you mean by top liner? Top liner, mm -hmm. like, like, so like if somebody makes a beat and they just send me the beat and then I write on top of it. I see. Um, like write lyrics? Yeah. Like, like write lyrics, melody, sing, basically, basically they'll, they'll give me an instrumental, like a dance groove or a something that they produce that has oh, just cool sounds. And then they say, Hey, turn this into a, a song. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, in answer to your question, um, I definitely identify myself more in the sort of like singer songwriter category. Mm -hmm. And because my whole life, well, my whole sort of, you know, songwriting life was really like you described with a guitar, kind of just fiddle around, come up with something, write a song. Yeah. And, uh, up until not that long ago, that's how I, I wrote every song. No song was finished or even, uh, like no, no recording was started until I had the song written yes. with the lyrics and guitar. Yes. And then the production was a, an after thing. Okay. But uh, I kind of had a transition with that. Like, you know, slowly over time, I've sort of uh, built a little uh, studio mm -hmm. for myself here, mm -hmm. which is really the first key to being fully creative with production, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, two records ago, I, I put out a, a record called Shelf Life. And I was kind of a lot of those songs I wrote them on guitar but I experimented with the production myself uh in this room here and um but after that uh I kind of well basically I put that I put that album out and it was a really personal album like I put a lot of myself into it I thought a lot of my best songs were on it and then the pandemic hit mm -hmm. I had tours canceled basically like a stillbirthed album you know it was just yeah. like what the fuck yeah uh and um it was I was kind of I was devastated in a way only because it was like, I, you know, I was proud of this album. I wanted it to, to, to get out there mm -hmm. and it couldn't really, mm -hmm. it was stifled in that way. Yes. So anyway, we're, we're all sitting around like everybody was right. Mm -hmm. Sitting around 
And uh, I didn't know. I started thinking like, shit, maybe I just need to find something else. I started thinking about becoming an electrician or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a friend who's mm -hmm. an electrician. Mm -hmm. And um, I experimented with that. But, the, you know, there, I was just sitting around. And I was like, fuck, I got... I got this space in the basement. I got tons. Of, I always have tons of musical ideas. That's one thing. Yeah. The lyrics are always the thing huh. that hold me back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I care about the lyrics mm -hmm. and uh, they don't always come so easily. But I get tons of like uh, melody ideas, sort of seeds of songs, little yeah. bits and pieces. Yeah. And I was thinking, I got, I got all this stuff. Like, why don't I just, I just, I was like, shit, just go down and make music. And I, it was kind of a process of letting go. Mm -hmm. And the idea was I would just make songs before I had lyrics. And that was the first time I really did that. Mm -hmm. So I would, I'd have a musical idea, like I'd have a lyrical mel melody mm -hmm. with no words attached, but I would just build songs around that. And I started making productions and then adding the lyrics last. Cool. And that was a really uh, liberating thing for me because I'd never done that. And, and now I do a combination of that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time I build the songs uh, and then, I'll have, you know, I'll, I won't worry about finishing the lyrics before I start building the song, cool. the production yeah. of the song. Yeah. And uh, it's fun. It's more fun to do it that way. I don't always end up with like, part of it was letting go of, of being so precious about every word uh, needing to be some kind of like personal manifesto. Because mm -hmm. I think I, I've written enough songs for me to have clearly identified sort of what I wanted to say in those songs. Okay. That... Uh, I felt good about just like, you know what, not every song has to be chock full of like deep personal meaning. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they could be meaningless, mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Now I'm in like a combination zone where uh, if, if, uh, if the inspiration strikes and I get a song and I write it and I feel good about it, but if not, I'll still, I'll still start working on a song and see where it goes. And it's, it's a fun process. That is a fun process. And I, I resonate with that too. Cause that, that was my, that was my, kind of flow and it opened me up once I stopped feeling the song had to be done before I could move to the next stage. Once I started to blur those lines, I, I feel the same thing with mixing now where mixing used to be this distinct, like I'm going to mix, I'm going to make things sound good now. And now mm -hmm. I just make things sound good when I want them to sound good. And then at the end I'll make them sound good together. But like breaking, breaking down the walls of like the arranger, the producer, all of the different hats and just turning them into one hat I felt was liberating and made me create more made me make more stuff yeah it's just it's just making music right. at that point right, right? exactly yeah you, all those things are pieces of it that's a good point good way to put it really good way to put it um in terms of uh finger style guitar could you talk about kind of your inspirations i really love some of the stuff that you do with rhythms um i I'm still Thank working you. on it. I, I play with a pick 99% of the time. So when you take the pick out of my hands, I, I kind of feel like I have hmm. four or five different individual characters all kind of wanting to do their own thing. Can you talk about like finding different rhythms, playing with that, experimenting with patterns where you get inspiration? Sure. Like, like my whole, my whole story with guitar mm -hmm. is, um, I, like I, I have an older brother and, uh, um, I was about 15 and I, I started like digging into his tapes, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and I, a tape that I, I put in and it literally blew my mind was uh Zeppelin, uh, two, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and just hearing like Jimmy, you know, I hadn't really listened to much Zeppelin. I'd, I'd heard Zeppelin yeah, obviously, right. but like just, just putting that on in my bedroom and uh, heartbreaker came on, you know, mm -hmm. da, na, 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 na. and these riffs like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. It just, uh, I, I went to my mom and I was just like, I gotta, I want to, I want to play guitar. And she, we, she took me to the mall and we bought an acoustic guitar and I started taking lessons. And so it was just, I mean, the ironic thing is like, I wanted to be like Jimmy Page, <laughs> but I was like, I was like, mom, I want lessons or I want to learn guitar. And she's like, well, I'll get you lessons. So she just signed me up for some lessons mm -hmm. and the lessons just happened to be uh classical guitar lessons. Mm. So I'd, I'd go there and I'd, you know, I'd have my foot on a stool and like yeah. play with the guitar on my left knee. Right. You know, right. totally elevated. Like, yeah. Kind of formal. And, uh, and I did that for two years and, um, and then eventually, you know, it was like, I was le learning to read music and stuff, but that's not really what I wanted. I was already starting to write songs and, mm -hmm. and I was just like, ah, I'm good. I'm good now. But, um, I just went from there, but, but I, I guess like the, what I'm grateful for is, uh, is 
accidentally, I was given that, that sort of skill base mm. of like learning to use all my fingers. Well, not the, pinky, You're right. but, but the three, you yeah. know, now I mostly use the two. Mm-hmm. I'll throw the three and the third in once in a while. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I learned to do that. And, uh, and that became the basis from which I, I just experimented with guitar. Mm-hmm. And so I started as a finger picker mm. and I never used a pick. And, uh, for years and years, I would never use a pick and a pick felt really foreign to me. And it's only been in the last several years that I've started using a pick just to more so, um, when I'm, when I'm producing mm-hmm. songs, you know, yeah, yeah. for a part, right. but I'm still not totally comfortable with it. It's a whole art form in itself. And on stage, I've never once used a pick. Really? So how cool. Yeah. I just, I just strum with my fingers and my thumb. I love it. And I often, I'll do a combination of like finger picking and strumming mm-hmm. for, you know, different moments mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, for sure. But, um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, the language that I use with the guitar is my fingers and that's what feels right for me. Yeah. The pick st- still feels foreign. I, I'm mm-hmm. getting better at it as I, as I go along, but I know that, you know, I have friends who are great guitar players and they're, you know, the pick, yeah, they totally. can do whatever. Yeah, totally. Um, but that's sort of, like I said, it's kind of an accidental gift I was given to learn that because, you know, there's lots of great, I, I'm, I'm good at, I'm pretty good at guitar at like the sort of style that I've developed. Um, but I'm limited, you know, mm-hmm. but, pe- but, but, uh, you know, I've had enough people kind of come up to me and compliment me on it that I'm like, Hey, maybe I'm a pretty good finger picker. Mm-hmm. But I guess the reality is a lot of people don't do that that much. Mm-hmm. And, uh, as far as like inspirations go, yeah. like, uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I listen to a lot of like John Fahey and stuff like that. And I don't play anything like, I don't know if you're familiar with John Fahey, but really experimental, uh, uh, kind of a weirdo who just played amazing guitar Sweet. pieces don't, that don't sound like anything else. I must do it. And like, uh, Leo Kotke and, mm-hmm. you know, these sort of like guitar wizards. Right. And I was never one of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I loved that kind of style and I loved, uh, listening to Bert Yanch. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, he was one of my early influences. I don't know if you know him. He's a... British uh, I don't think so. psych folk. You're dropping some cool, player. cool uh, people for me to check out after this pod. I'm excited. Yeah, well, well, you know what? What happened was um, I had a real coming of age with music where I, I moved into a house with a, a buddy of mine. Mm-hmm. He bought a house, uh, you know, in like a central part of town, and you know, I was in my early 20s, and it was the first time moving out, and we moved in together. And then a third friend of mine that I uh, I went to high school with, and we were like really good buddies back then, but we sort of, you know fell apart not because of any reason reason just sort of drifted apart is a better word Mm -hmm. um but then reconnected and he was getting into records and he was big into music like buying cds records Mm -hmm. and he got me into records and uh i started going down to the record store and uh just collecting records finding records that sounded cool look the cover looked cool i'd check them out and went down all these rabbit holes and it was a total music awakening for me where I discovered all sorts of music that got me excited. It didn't matter what the genre was, but just something that sounded interesting. And through that, I got into all sorts of stuff. But, um, but yeah, Bert, Bert Yanch was one of them. Mm-hmm. He, he's, he, uh, he, well, I guess just to, to give a bit of context, like um, he, uh, he's been around since the 60s. He's dead now. But a uh, really influential uh, acoustic guitar player, uh, really great with his fingers, used weird tunings, but really like pulled on the strings, mm. like snapped them mm. in a way that you felt like he was, uh, had control of the guitar in a way that I hadn't really heard. And then I remember reading this quote that uh, Neil Young had said something like, something to the effect of like, Bert Yanch did for the acoustic guitar what Hendrix did for the electric. Mm. And I mean, that might be a bit, uh, you know, hyperbole, but there's no question you listen to this guy play and like he, he really, you know, nobody sounded like him. And so he was a big influence on me as well. And, uh, yeah. And then just basic stuff like Bob Dylan doing, you know, he's a finger picker sure. too, right? Yeah, and totally. I was, ba- I was big into Bob Dylan in my formative years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still am. He's Bob Dylan. <laughs> right. But, uh, but just stuff like that. I, mm-hmm. I was a folk musician and a lot of folk stuff was finger picked. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think that's yeah. what, I think that's what ultimately draws me to it so much is that it unlocks a part of the instrument that I still struggle with. And I, I feel like a pretty capable guitarist, but it's fun to, it's like, it's like brushing your teeth with your left hand, kind of, kind of feeling a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's a lifelong journey. You know, you can keep learning. Like, uh, I'm trying to learn the piano right now. Nice. You know? Yeah, totally. It's hard. It's hard, man. It's hard, but, but <laughs> yeah. that's the beauty of it. Like you keep, 
You never, you never, you, there's no point where you're like, okay, I've learned guitar. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's done. I'm done. I, I've learned music now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Time to do puzzles <laughs> and, ret- and retire. And yeah. listen back on my greatness. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait for the accolades to be showered upon me. Deservedly. Much deservedly. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was um, obviously your TikTok and your reels and the kind of kind of content side of what you're doing, getting your music out there, getting your personality out there. But mm-hmm. I know that there's like the typical questions about that. The thing that I want to talk to you about most about it is you have personal conversations with yourself. And I feel like that is so songwriter of you because that's fu- fundamentally what I feel like when I'm writing a song or something, I'm singing something back to myself, gut checking it, you know, going, going back this dialectic that you have between, between yourself. How does that feel? Do I've never done that before. How does it feel doing it? How do you come up with those ideas? Is it like songwriting where you're like, you have this little nugget and you go, okay, I'm going to follow that idea. Or, um, you know, how, how, how does that process work? Yeah. Good question. Well, I mean, the whole social media thing is just a nightmare for me. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like anything about it. You know, it just like, and it's been around for so long mm-hmm. that I, it's just, you, you can't be in the game and not participate totally in that side of it. Totally. So I've, so generally I've really struggled to like find my place in like how to use that in a way that feels good. Mm-hmm. Um, and TikTok is the first app that came along where I was like, okay, this kind of can make sense. This makes sense to me more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Like, Instagram, Facebook was the worst. Twitter, yeah. n- not good. Yeah, I agree. Facebook was the worst. Um, but uh, but yeah, TikTok. Because like I I love I love film. Mm-hmm. I love movies. I love the idea of like making little little films and stuff. And um and so I experimented a lot with TikTok, and it was just kind of fun. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah, none of it went anywhere, right? I'd make these little what I'd consider masterpieces. These little like mini. <laughs> these these little like uh, little films with mm-hmm. like a poetic uh, d- uh, uh, narration, mm-hmm. and they they just wouldn't go anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. It's like holy fuck, what's going on? Mm-hmm. This app's broken. Uh-huh. But uh, but slowly over time, I, I I tried all sorts of stuff, and I mm-hmm. I certainly you know so I I basically started doing those dialogues, mm-hmm. um, and they haven't taken off by any means. Like I am small time TikTok, but the dialogues started resonating pretty clearly with like a small subset Mm -hmm. of musicians Mm -hmm. who, who at least think like me. And, Mm -hmm. and I think there's a, there's something relatable that all of us who are trying to like, you know, communicate something through music or through art, it's not just music, Mm -hmm. um, something personal and something special, but are continually faced with the fact that most people don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, the internet is like the ocean and you're, you know, mm-hmm. you're like spitting into a wave. Like yeah. it's just, yeah. most people don't give a shit. And so, um, uh, that, that felt good to keep doing that because of the feedback mm-hmm. I was getting and that I continue to get of just people who are like saying like, you know, you've kind of, you've put into words what I think. Mm-hmm. And I think there's power in that and it's, that's encouraging. But as far as like where it comes from, uh, I think about this shit all the time, all the time. Mm-hmm. Ever, you know, I ever since I I quit my job to be like I do music full time, mm-hmm. and uh, and with that choice is the uh, it comes the the puzzle of trying to justify that choice yeah. over and over because mm-hmm. you're you're surrounded by people who. Uh, you can easily perceive as being more successful than you in life mm-hmm. because they have nicer houses, they have nicer cars, they make more money, they can do more things, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really easy to feel like a failure and a loser in not just music, but like I said, like any artistic form because you make yourself so vulnerable yeah. and your your worth is generally made through that vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And so when it doesn't, uh, succeed, uh, in the, according to the metrics that every, every other success in life is measured by Mm -hmm. when you look out your window, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
uh, it's really easy to feel like, like a loser, like you're failing. And so I've struggled with those, uh, those thoughts all the way along. And I'm always thinking, I like philosophy too, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I, I'm a, I'm a thinker, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't mean, I don't want to sound pretentious by that other than the simple fact that I spend a lot of my time thinking. That's what I mean by a thinker. Well, that's what philosophy means. I've, Love of, yeah, of wisdom and thinking. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I won't say I'm smarter than anybody. Mm-hmm. I'm smarter than a few people. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> there's lots of people smarter than me. Anyway, I'm just trying to, you know, yeah. g- give a give a little context yeah. before uh, people think I'm some pompous ass. <laughs> but I do enjoy reading uh, philosophy and thinking about these things. And I'm always thinking about life, like what goes into a, a meaningful life. What do I want out of my life? And that's why I'm doing music yeah. because ultimately, that's what I want to do, and it feels meaningful to me in in the real way. Um, so that stuff just goes into those dialogues. It, it, it's, I get that feedback from other people, but it also kind of, it's cathartic for me to work that stuff through in words. Yeah. And, um, and I, I like exploring that stuff. I like writing. I like the idea of like writing the dialogues. And mm-hmm. so it's kind of been a nice little pocket mm-hmm. of social media that feels good for me where, like I said, everything else mostly feels uncomfortable and inauthentic to me. I like that a lot. And I like that you've carved that. I feel like I'm still trying to carve that. Of like I, this podcast is has been the closest thing for me because I get to have real conversations with people that I am just curious about the way they think and the way they create. So yeah, I get you know, that. You know. That makes sense. So, but I, I I hear you. Especially, I don't even have a Facebook. I it was the worst. I I've had past musical lives, and there's part of the reason why I wear the mask is. Um, it's, I thought you were like free. a burn victim. I know, or totally. Something. I proved it to you. I showed you my face. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. You're, you're very handsome. Very oh, handsome. Well, thank you, sir. The lighting is terrible. But um, but yeah, I mean, one one of the one of the interesting things about like vulnerability or wearing a mask or whatever, you know, literally, um, is you you cut off some of those like creative flows when you think too much, uh, when you not think too much about it, when you wallow too much in it, at least I did. Um, like putting on the mask was liberating to me because then it's like, okay, now I'm pouring myself, my truest self into this entity, this bucket and people can judge the bucket, but it's not me, but it is me. You know, it did it, it created this like uh, ironic, uh, double think that opened me up creatively. I get it. I get it yeah. because it, you, it's, you know, you, your your creative side is your identity, but it's also not like it's good to decouple that that creative identity from this identity that you have built from thinking about how other people see you. Mm-hmm. And I think I to me that makes sense that wearing a mask puts a, a slight layer between that between what what you're trying to do internally and what you're you are str- you can be sort of caught up in mm-hmm. uh assuming what people are seeing from the external and and, and trying to make sense of that i mean that's the real web of consciousness really yeah, of yeah. any existence is like trying to tease apart the inside and the outside mm-hmm. and make sense of it all so that makes sense to me purely from a creative side i mean that w- you know not quite the same thing but mm-hmm. the a similar logic sort of went into my decision to use uh a moniker like slow leaves mm. instead of my own name. Yeah, it's a good point. Was was a similar kind of process of just having some kind of uh some kind of layer that I could uh you know, I mean, it, the ironically I've sort of like I'm, you know, I'm more myself than ever mm-hmm. uh under the slow leaves things and so, and so I sometimes I feel a little bit like why don't I just use my own name? But uh but there is some kind of like some comfort in um in having that sort of like building that house in which I can live a certain way, yeah, but it doesn't have to be everything. Yep, exactly. If that makes if that it makes does. sense. It does. There's a certain baggage that comes with your own personal identity that obviously you're drawing from creatively, but like I have a certain sense that I want my parents or my sister to look at me and think of me in a certain way. And that doesn't always sus with the kind of music that I want to make and the kind of music videos that I want to make. Like, 
I want to be able to be stupid I, I, and free and yeah. and chaotic. Yeah, you know, and and I don't want people to necessarily think like, oh, he's actually insane. Um, maybe just a little bit, but like that decoupling, I think was furtive. Yeah, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Um, I want to talk uh, one one more one more thing about fitting it in your life. I, I I saw that in I think it was in one of your videos about. You, 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 obviously you, you, you had a great video about choice and whether or not you were led to make the decision to focus on music full time, or if that decision was just fundamental, something that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, I want to talk, like, I'm thinking of the, the, like the, you know, people, people that are making music, listening to this podcast, how do they find the time to fit it in their life? How do they make the right, how do they make those choices? Or are those things that it's kind of like you have excuses or you have action? I just, I just kind of wanted to like unpack that conversation a little bit with you. I know that there's no real answer, but I just figured that would be fun to talk about to close out the show here. Man, uh, you know, I, I don't know, like, uh, uh, it's controversial and that's kind of what, what I, I enjoyed about that that particular uh dialogue mm-hmm. was that some people not a lot but some people kind of came at me not not in an aggressive way but just mm-hmm. in a you know wanted to have the discussion uh because there's there is a lot to unpack there and i guess i guess in this in this most simple way i could put it it's like if you have another choice you're probably going to choose that mm. that path mm-hmm. Because uh, l- spending your life in a creative realm, like trying to make your living in a creative realm for the same, for the reasons that I already itemized, like yeah. making yourself vulnerable as the primary purpose of your occupation. And then with that coming the cost of having to like pick yourself up, scrape your self-esteem off the floor time and time again, reassemble yourself to do it over and over to be more vulnerable Mm -hmm. um, is really difficult. And so few people really make meaningful success out of that in terms of like, again, what the the typical markers of success in life are. So it's really hard, but of course there's a whole nother side. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's an incredible privilege, of course, to even have that option. Like, I mean, Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you were in a in you know destitute poverty, it, yeah. you, you might not have a choice. Yeah. You just have to get a job and and whatever. You're not going to you know spend. Oh, I'm just going to write some poems. You know, uh-huh. yeah. like yeah. I get it. So th- there is that that other side to it. But I think within the context of anybody's life, um, if there's something stirring in you that needs to create, I think it's it's gonna it's gonna find a way to to come out you're going to find a way to to do it it doesn't mean that you have to make it your job Mm -hmm. but if you have a job that is occupying all your time and there's something eating away at you saying oh i wish i could i wish i had a bit more time to paint yeah not that i want to be a painter and i'm going to make my life as a painter Mm -hmm. uh but but you're going to find a way to carve that out yeah if it matters enough you're going to find another job that can still pay your bills but allows you some time to paint and might be a small sacrifice, but you're gaining access to that part of you that was eating away. And so I think there's different contexts in everybody's life where that fits in, what the right balance is. But I think that's what I meant by you don't have a choice. Mm. And so some people are like, Oh, I wish I could do that. Or I want to do that. If you, if, if you're not going to do it, then I don't think that, I, I really feel like it's probably not burning strong enough mm. that it's a strong enough need in your life. Mm-hmm. It's not going to override your want to like have a, have a nice house and be able to like go to, you know, parties and feel like you are part of the gang and stuff like that. Those are the choices. Mm-hmm. And I guess what I was exploring in, in, within that is yeah. like h- how much of a choice is it really for me? And I can only, again, I can only talk about my own experience really, and then try to, draw universal conclusions. (laughs) But, um, but for me, like I, I worked, I worked jobs. Like I, Mm -hmm. I, I started doing music for real, uh, when I was about 33, I think 34 maybe. And, uh, 
and like I said, I started playing guitar at 15 and, um, mm -hmm. I went to university. I, I went into a job, uh, but I never gave myself into any kind of career. I floated around with different jobs because I always wanted to play music. Yeah. I always yeah. had this like door open to play music. And so as a result, I didn't commit to anything. I didn't commit to music mm -hmm. certainly, mm -hmm. but I didn't commit to a career either. And so I wasn't achieving anything and it was, it was eating away at me and I got married. I have a kid and, um, my wife was just watching me like my, you know, I felt like I was dying on the inside. I was just slowly, because of that core piece of me, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't giving it the attention I knew that it needed. And so eventually, you know, at 33, after just like floating around with certain jobs and talking about, you know, the millionth time that I was like, oh, I wish, why am I even writing songs? What's the point? You know, all this stuff. Yeah. And my wife said to me at dinner one time, we just, you know, we went out, we had a babysitter and we had the, that conversation and she said, well, why don't you just quit your job? We'll figure, you know, we'll figure it out. And it was r literally the first time that it really seemed like a, a, a real option. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of struck by it. Like, wow, like, could I actually do that? And so that's what we did. And, um, and I haven't looked back. It hasn't been easy. For, there's no question, mm -hmm. but I don't regret that moment for, for an instant. I think it was, uh, it was the best thing I did because I know if I stayed in that job and I kept doing it, I would be, I would have been miserable. I like that. And I like the way that you phrased it because people will phrase it like, listen to your heart. But I like the idea of competing wants and seeing which one overrides the other. Yeah, exactly. I mean, choice is such a, such a flimsy, uh, vague concept and everybody's, you know, I mean, we live in this time of like a lot of people want to manifest things and like, uh, time, time, like gratitude is a big thing. Like I think ultimately, uh, there's no answers to any of this. We're all so confused. Mm -hmm. Um, and all of those things are just, they're great mechanisms for, giving us the belief that we have some agency over our lives. When I firmly believe the reality is we don't, mm -hmm. we have very little agency. I don't believe in free will, for instance, mm -hmm. but, um, but that's a powerful idea to think that you can control those things. And that's where I think this idea of like choice, like everybody chooses. And that's what you get these people who like, you know, I'm a self-made millionaire or whatever. I just made the choice to pull up my bootstraps and work. And then, you know, people who don't succeed, it's, it's nobody's fault, but their own. Yeah. I think that's a totally false narrative. Mm -hmm. Um, I think so much of it is like, uh, is, I don't know about pre-built into us, but there are certain things that you're exactly right. It's about measuring wants and built and within the circumstance, the limitations of what your life can allow, mm -hmm. If you need, if you have such a dying need to create, there's some people who are in abject poverty and the dying, the need to, to paint or to write poetry or, or whatever it is to fucking, you know, design puzzles. I don't know. is so strong. Yes. They'll almost starve to do it. Yes. Right. Right. There's extremes. And so that's what I'm getting at. That's not just a choice. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, that's, that's something that's deep in you. That's a drive. It's driving you just like you would be driven to find food if you were starving. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole spectrum. We all fall along some line in that. But I think if you're somewhere along the line where you're like, I'm just going to follow my heart. It's, it's my dream to be a musician and you want to give it a shot or something. It's probably not going to work out. Mm -hmm. uh, you might get lucky, but, uh, but the, 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 the heart of it, um, is really, I don't think there is a choice, I guess. I don't no. know. No, I'm no, 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 I'm no, it's good. I've been rambling this whole time, yeah, I, I, but uh, I really, I really enjoyed now, it. I re now I'm acknowledging it. No, I really, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Cause I mean, just, just as like how I'm digesting this at least is I'm, I'm resonating with, with, with it in the sense of there are certain things in music that you can't stop me from doing. I'm going to produce, write and record songs. Everything else is, is, I don't have a an insatiable need to release them. Yeah, I, I don't have well, an insatiable and hey, need to market them. And hey, look, hey, look. Them. Yeah, the, the fact is, mu music is fun. It feels good. People yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have that burning need to like music. Like yeah. people can just play music. Yeah. Like find a little slice in your life. Get together with your buddies. Sit in your basement. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a joy. It's like reading, you know, like make time for it. I agree. If it's something that brings you joy, it doesn't have to be this like burning creative statement. Yes. Uh, so that, that's, that's an important, important distinction. That is an to important make. distinction. And I think that's an important caveat of like, I, I personally feel my, 
the best way that you can be a better music fan is to learn a little bit of music. Like just a little bit, like interact with it in some way to make it personal and like feel like, what does it feel like to play an instrument that you really like? And, and write a little bit, like, like write a totally. simple melody, like those kind of things. Then you can, I, I feel like it just unlocks worlds of, in the same way, like you cook. So I think it's easier to appreciate a great chef because you cook. Like Absolutely. people that play soccer can appreciate the pros that play soccer. I didn't play soccer. I don't get it. I play basketball. And so I love watching basketball because I get it. Yeah. Like they're incredible because I know how hard it is just to dribble, you know? Exactly. You can appreciate the, what goes into the people who do it really well. Exactly. The people that took it almost yeah. extremist, like to get that good at any of those things that we talked about, even uh, being a Michelin star chef, you have to sacrifice to a point of near insanity mm -hmm. to be able to accomplish those things that ultimately get accolades, but um, there's no guarantee and, and there's a lot of traps along the way. So I think there's yeah, a lot of analogs exactly. there. Yeah. Absolutely. Very fun. Well, this is a super fun conversation. I am hoping that yeah, our listeners well, I, enjoy this. I like too. talking about this shit. It's great. I, I love this kind of stuff. It's great. So I, I appreciate the invite. Absolutely. I have, um, at, I have a musician that I've collaborated with. Um, his name's Eric. He goes by the crazy band name Oku Doxish, and he is like an alternative folk artist. I would love to connect the two of you because just based on this conversation, it's so similar to some of the things that he and I have talked about but very different in specific ways. I would love to hear a song that you guys could make together. So sorry to make that proposition publicly, hey. but I, I kind of want to make that happen. Just as a music fan, I want to hear what, what would be the fruit of that. Hey, I'm always open to new things. I'll, I'll send you some of his stuff after this episode. Thank you so much, Grant, Sounds for, good. for um, joining all of us, everybody listening um, and myself. If you guys want... Um, I have links at scubertdubert.pizza. You can find all of my stuff. Grant, what would be the best place for people to get in contact with you, ask you any questions, hear your tunes? Obviously, Slow Leaves on Spotify and wherever, but... Yeah, yeah. I'd say the internet. The internet. Join me on the internet. Yeah. On your browser. Yeah, I'm easy to find. Cool. I, I, there's not too many uh, uh, gatekeepers between me and anybody <laughs> that wants to communicate with me. <laughs> well, perfect. I'll put I'll put a link in the uh, in the bio as well. So thanks again for uh, for joining, and I hope uh, you have a wonderful night in Winnipeg. Thanks a lot. You too. Enjoy San Diego. It looks beautiful behind you. <laughs> thanks, man. It's it's uh, it's noon here. <laughs> Another sunny day. <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah.